Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my screencast. My name is Zan Ta, and I work for Repo Products in Smyrna, Georgia. We are an authorized gold partner with Autodesk, and I hope you enjoy my screencast. Please don't forget to give me feedback and any credit that's due. Uh, in today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at profiles and sweeps and reveals in Revit. Here I have Revit 2016 open. <clears throat> I have a standard wall, a roof, and a floor created. When we talk about uh, sweeps and reveals, a lot of people will typically go straight to walls and they'll choose a wall sweep or a wall reveal, which is perfectly fine. Um, you also, if you take a careful look, under roofs, you have roof soffit, roof fascia, roof gutter. Under floors, you have roof slab edges. And in essence, when we take a look at profiles and how they're used in Revit, they're either going to be extruded or they're going to be swept. If they're extruded, they're off of a linear path. If they are uh, swept, then it's going to be off of a nonlinear path. When we take a look at the wall command and head over to wall sweep, this is going to be either a horizontal or a vertical sweep. They're going to give you one called wall sweep cornice. If I go to the type properties and zoom in here, you can see that we can specify the profile and what the default is going to be or a specific profile that's already been created and loaded into the default project. So let's say, for example, I do something as simple as a soldier brick course. And if I say OK, when I go to click to place it, I can place it anywhere I want on that wall as a horizontal. Hit modify and I'm done. If I do it again and I choose vertical, now I have a vertical one. With wall sweeps or reveals, you can select them and you can push and pull the ends of them to adjust their exact position or use temporary dimensions to move them accordingly. Same thing goes with the wall sweep that's horizontal. Okay. Now, the wall sweep here is nothing more than, in this situation, a rectangle that is extruded vertically or horizontally. How do we create our own profile to use in this situation? <clears throat> We can head over to the big blue R application menu, new, family, head over to profiles, and there are several profiles to work with, hosted, mullion, rail, reveal, and stair nosing. For our purposes, we're going to pick, uh, pick profile, hit open, head over to the family category and parameters, and in the profile usage, we can specify what this is going to be. We're going to say wall sweep. And this point here represents the insertion point of that profile. So let's just say we draw a profile that looks like this. We save that profile. and then we'll load it into the project. Now that it's loaded into the project, if I select an existing wall sweep that we used earlier, we can go ahead and we can create a duplicate and call it what we want. We can then head inside here under profiles and we should be able to see the one that we made. So file one, hit okay, and now it automatically creates it. Now, if you noticed, I drew the profile very quickly so I wasn't um, too keen on exact size of it, but that's not a big deal. The essence of this uh, screencast is to get you to understand how to create a profile, how to load it into a project, and how to use it. So the same thing applies when you're doing a wall reveal. A, re a wall reveal is the same essence, vertical, horizontal, but the difference is that it cuts into the actual host object. And if we select that, and head over to edit types. Again, we can pick something we want. Well, let's pick this one, for example. And we can see that it goes into it. Okay. Now, how do we create a wall? Uh, how do we create a profile for a wall reveal and not a sweep? 
R, new, family, profile, and this time they give you one called reveal. Hit open. In this situation, it's going to give you the face of the wall, and it's going to give you the side that the wall is on. So you want to create your profile where it eats into the wall. So we'll go through and we'll draw something different. And when you're creating profiles, by the way, the sketch has to be one clean loop. No gaps, no overlaps, no straight lines anywhere. Okay. And again, I'm not going to be concerned about the size. I'm just going to draw something like this. We're going to go ahead and save this. We're going to call it Profile 2. And we will load it into the project. Now that it's loaded, we can take the review that we have. We can duplicate it. And then we can go under the profiles, and we can see Profile 2. Hit OK. And now you can see it's going into that wall. So that's how you create and work with profiles uh, in Revit for wall sweeps and wall reveals. Um, now, earlier I said if you take a look at the roof commands for roof soffit, fascia, and gutter, it's exactly the same thing. So for example, if I say roof gutter, it's going to give you one that says gutter beveled 5x5. Five five. If we look at the properties, it's using a specific profile that's already been created and drawn for you, and it's already loaded into the project. So if I just pick an edge, it's going to use that edge to put the gutter on, like so. Um, if you select that after the fact, again, you have these little grip points that you can click and drag to specify the length of the start and finish of that gutter. So how do we make our own? Very simply, just take the one that we have to work with, we'll duplicate it, call it what we want, and go inside the profiles and pick something else. And since we already loaded profile 2, let's just use that. So you can see this command is nothing more than a wall sweep or a wall reveal. So when you're looking at roof soffit, fascia, and gutter, it's the same principle as wall sweeps and reveals. Same thing with floor slab edges. I give you one to work with, and if you select it, um, you can see, let's go ahead and um, make this a little larger. And we'll say floor slab edge. We'll pick this one. And you can see that it's actually using a profile that is shaped like this, and it's being swept along a curved path to give you that slab edge. So how do you create your own slab edge profile? Same principle. Um, what we can do as well is if you go under the families portion of the project browser, head over to profiles, you're going to see a whole bunch of them that you're working with. So let's look at the slab edge thicken. We can right click and edit this. We'll go ahead and we'll save this as a new family. And we'll call it uh, Profile 3. And we're going to make some adjustments. Let's say, for example, I need to put in this. We'll save it. We'll load it into the project. Now that it's loaded, we can select the existing one that we're working with, duplicate it. and then go back inside and look for the one that we created earlier and it should change. Now let's just double check. Let me open up profile 3. Okay, profile 3. There's profile 3. Oops. And now you can see it's being used and it has that little extension here as well. Okay. So that's how we work with profiles for sweeps and reveals inside Revit. Lastly, when you take, let's go ahead and delete some of these in a wall situation. 
If you select the wall and go to its type properties, you can click preview to see what it looks like in plan. But if you switch it to section and hit edit, this information opens up and we have sweeps and reveals here as well. So I can go here under sweeps. I can add one, pick a particular profile, say this one. Uh, we can specify how far up or down it is from the bottom or the top and what side, interior or exterior. If I hit apply, you're going to see one is placed. Hit OK, hit OK, and hit OK. What ends up happening is that it puts in this wall sweep embedded into the system family definition of the wall. So anywhere you use the wall, this particular wall, it will have this um, wall sweep as you can see. Now, if you do it this way, you can't tab into that particular profile to select it to adjust uh, one edge or the other. Um, what you can do is just select it in general. And if you click and drag the little dot, it will allow you to manipulate it after the fact. Okay, So it's something where you don't necessarily click as an individual object. It won't tab into it. You just select it, and you'll see that point and you can click and adjust that point. So it makes a lot of sense this way. And the same functionality goes when you're dealing with uh, uh, reveals. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.